Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day seven, and today's node is the Karma Material Builder VAR. So over here, I just have a shader ball, a camera, and a Karma Physical Sky. Of course, there are no materials attached to this yet, so let's go ahead and add them. Previously, we looked at the Material Linker node. But in this one, I'm going to be looking at the material library. That's because the material library gives us access to the Vex Boulder context for all of our shaders. So if we dive inside of here, you'll see that it takes us to the Vex Boulder context. And from here, you could drop a Vex material boulder, a material X boulder, or the comma material boulder. Now, what is the difference between these three? The material boulder over here uses Vex to bold the shaders. So you can only use this with Karma CPU. Karma XPU won't work with that. As for Material X, this will function perfectly in XPU or CPU, but it's also meant for third-party applications as well. So you can export a USD asset from Houdini and the materials will work in that third-party application if they can use Material X. As for the Karma Material node, it is a version of the Material X subnet, but in this one, you also have access to Karma specific nodes. So if I dive inside the Material X one and type Karma, you'll see nothing comes up. But if I go inside the Karma one and type Karma, you'll see that I have these Karma specific nodes. Now the Karma Material Builder will work with CPU or XPU, but I have noticed that some nodes don't behave perfectly well on XPU. So if you want to be safe and make sure that everything works correctly for XPU, you can also just use the Material X Material Builder. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually build a Karma material. Let's just rename this to grayscale gorilla underscore tiles. And the reason I'm calling it that is because for this part, I'm going to be grabbing some materials from grayscale gorilla. So they have some free assets over here. I'm going to be grabbing this ceramic tiles square over here, and we're going to be building the material inside of Houdini. The cool thing is you can actually use their importer to import the material directly without having to build it and it saves you loads and loads of time. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well, but let's first familiarize ourselves with the Karma Material Builder node. So if we dive inside of here, we'll be able to build a material. So if we go in here and I just have to change the base color to something like red, you won't notice a difference. That's because we need to assign this material. Now you can assign a material on the material library. All you have to do is say auto for materials, assign to geometry and drag over the geometry to assign, and that'll work. We're not going to be doing it that way in this tutorial. What we're going to be doing is auto filling. So it creates a path. So you can see it has created this GSG tiles over here. And then we're going to use a material linker, right? So material linker after the material library. And instead of using the catalog, we're just going to use the materials that are auto detected from our scene graph tree over here. So as you can see, if we now take this GSG tiles and drag it over to our shader ball, it does the same thing. Right, so this is another option and another way to use the material linker. So inside of this material library, let's just go ahead and create a material X material. Over here, we're going to use the MTLX image node. This is how we bring in texture maps. So as you can see, it has a signature of color. That's going to be perfect for base color. So go ahead and grab from this grayscale gorilla base color for our tiles. Plug that into base color, and there we have our tiles. Now this is incomplete because it's just the base color. We also have to use roughness and normals. So let's go and drop another MTLX image node. This time we're gonna grab roughness and roughness is going to be a grayscale image. So it's going to only have a single color channel. So we're gonna use float. Go over to file name and choose our roughness. Drag this over to specular roughness. And if we take a close look over here, you can see that our material now has some imperfections in its roughness. So already we've got great detail. But over here, let's just go ahead and use an MTLX image, set it to a vector three for our normal maps, and then go and choose our normals. With this, we can now drop a normal map, MTLX normal map. Plug this into the first input of the normal map, and then this goes into this geometry input over here, into normals. You can extend these out so that you can see where it goes. It's going straight into normals. And when we do that, you'll see that the normal map has been applied to our geometry. We can increase or decrease the scale over here on the normal map. So zero is no influence. And then something like five is a high influence. You can also do interesting things like edge wear. So let's just go ahead and use a Karma curvature node. This is gonna take a position and a normal map. So we're gonna use the position over here. And our normals, we can actually just grab from this MTLX normal map over here. From here, let's use an unlit surface, plug this in to the emission, 
and plug that into Surface so that we can visualize what we have. And you can then go ahead and make all sorts of changes. Another thing that you can do is multiply your position to get finer control and smaller details. Plug that into a ramp, comma, ramp constant, and then just dial in the values. You could do a mix, so an MTLX mix on the base color, and end up with some sort of edge wear like that. Now that's one way of creating a material over here, but with Grayscale Gorilla, there's a really easy way thanks to their plugin. So if you don't want to have to go through the process of having to place each of these MTLX images and put this entire network together, what you can do is just use the import material shelf tool that they have. So if you don't have the Grayscale Gorilla shelf tool, just make sure to go over to shelves and enable Grayscale Gorilla over there. This will only show up if you do have the plugin installed. Over here, we can import a material, click on the folder where our material is being stored, say accept and import. And just like that, we have a material brought to the material network. Then we can just press control X and it's really as easy as just pasting it in our material library, just like that. And now, once again, if we just go to our material library and auto full, you'll see that we have that material that we just brought in being recognized over there. The cool thing is at our material linker, we can now very easily just drag that one over instead. And an added benefit is that they've actually exposed some parameters for us so we can do things like scaling, offset, and rotation. So that gives us a lot of control and it's really easy to bring these in. And of course, we can still make changes to this. If we dive inside, we can still do things like, say, increasing the scale on this, all sorts of things, right? We still have full access to the material network. It's just that with this plugin, it's really easy to bring in your materials. So again, import material, choose the folder of the material, import, cut, paste, and then we auto full, and it's available in our material linker. So this is a great way to work with the common material build of op, the material library, and the material linker, all in conjunction with Grayscale Gorilla and the Houdini plugin for it. One thing to keep in mind is that these are MTLX networks, right? So if we go inside and we try and drop a common node, it won't give us access, but it's really not a big deal. All we have to do is make a common material boulder node and just take the contents of this and just move it into this context over here, right? Once we do that, we'll now have access to all of those common nodes and it's really not a big deal. So that is just something to keep in mind. If you do want to be using the common material nodes with the default Grayscale Gorilla plugin. So that's all for this part. I do hope that this helped you understand the common material build of VARP, as well as all of the other functionalities surrounding it, the different types of shaders, as well as how we can use Grayscale Gorilla to import materials and just very easily use them with our material linker and our material library. So thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow with the Karma Fogbox VARP.